Peach and David Thomas playing both. We have Esper Control. Actually, Drew's on Bant Walkers. Um, he is not playing the version that plays Sylvan Karyatid. He just has the Aethling as his creature. I do like that. As do I. Um, that gives him a little more pro action in the matchup. Um, but as we see here, we are just finished with game one. David Thomas is currently up a game. Yeah, the Bant Walkers deck here from Beach, he does have Kiora and Elspeth and Jace. So uh, those are the Planeswalkers that he's working with. Kiora underplayed right now, still looking for its home. This looks like the best deck for it at this moment. Uh, with any luck, it'll uh, improve with the next set, uh, mostly because I like Kiora a lot and I want that card to see some play. Thomas's side, pretty general stuff, honestly. Um, you know, he's got the one Aether Link, he's got three copies of Elspeth, a Doom Blade in his main deck for his splash, along with a couple copies of Ultimate Price, access to Thoughtseize and other things like that in the sideboard. So we've seen Esper Control before and we've seen David Thomas play decks like this in the past to great success. Yeah, so when we look at the sideboards, because that's what's going to matter here, um, let's talk about like what each player has, what they can win with. Uh, starting on David's side. David has a second Aetherling in the board. He has a fifth Sphinx's Revelation in the form of Opportunity. He also has a pair of Gainsays and a pair of Negates, which will be great in this matchup, meaning that David will have more counter spells than his opponent, and his game plan will be about resolving one of his two Aetherlings. Yep. Because he has... He's playing black. He does actually not have Thought Seize in his deck. Yeah, list. I'm a little surprised by that. Not only do you see people splash black just for Thought Seize. Well, what it allows him to do, and that's been right now the the Esper strategy in the mirror has been to push through an Aetherling with the help of cards like Gainsay and Thought Seize. And you Thought Seize away their counter spells, and then you cast an Aetherling. David's going to have to instead of Thought Seizing first and then a casting Aetherling, he's going to have to have just a boatload of mana and then play Aetherling with counter with and win a counter war. To do that means he probably won't even be able to go for Aetherling until like very late in the game. You know, yeah. he'll need 11, 12, at least, at least 10 mana up to go for something like that. Um, on Drew's side, Drew has quite the sideboard. Uh, he plays, first of all, he has an Elixir of Immortality in his sideboard, which okay. is the trump in this matchup, meaning David's going to have to try to win. Um, on top of that, uh, cards that he has, which he can probably board in, is that he has a Render Silence. That's his additional counterspell, but that's actually, and two to spell. So he has counterspells that are good at winning counter wars, but not ones that are good at countering David's threats. He's very light on ways to counter Aetherling, actually. Under Wayne, game number two here, a Temple of Enlightenment here from Beach will start things off. Thomas with a Temple of Deceit, and as I often do say when we're watching Control Mirror, oftentimes it's the First person to miss a land drop is the one who ends up losing, or at least has a lot of difficulty here. So scry lands actually do help to ensure that you can't hit all of your land drops, and both players have plenty of them, as Beach will play a Temple of Plenty before passing it back to Thomas, who will take a draw. Looks like he has a Temple of Silence, but he's going to start here with a Pithy Needle, and we'll see what he wants to name. Well, the only card that's not symmetric in their decks is Kiora. There's three Kiora, two Elspeth in Drew's deck. So he can go ahead and name that one without any collateral damage. Yeah, that's exactly what he did name. So Kiora, the Crashing Wave, is going to be slowed down quite a bit here. Thomas, to figuring out what land he wants to play, he's going to go with Hollow Fountain tapped and pass the turn back over to Beach, who will take a draw here. Let's see if he has anything to do on his third turn outside of just a land drop. And it's going to be an island, and he does have something to do, and it's a copy of Detention Sphere. So definitely saying that I want my QR back, it's very important to me. Yeah, I mean, that's good. This is the last turn that Drew really would like to tap out unless he's making a Jace. Um, that Muta Vault is problem means that if Drew taps out for Jace or QR here, well, if he taps out for Jace here, he's taking a little bit of a risk. Tagging out for QR is still fine. I mean, he's definitely casting something because he played a Holophon on tap to go down to 18. Now here is QR. We'll see if Thomas does have a counter spell. Looks like he does have a Dissolve at the ready. The question is, does he want to counter this or does yeah. he want to maybe go after it with Mutaval? But he wants to counter it. He has the... And here's a danger from Drew's side. I don't think you want to make that tap out play unless you have a Muta Vault in play because because of what this could happen and what is going to happen, which is dissolve into Jace. Yeah. Now this puts David ahead. If Drew had a Muta Vault and it'll say a detention sphere, then David wouldn't have a, like this play wouldn't work. He would either get to kill the Jace or get to desphere the Jace. Yeah, and Thomas is dangerously far ahead right now. He's going to take a game, mm -hmm. say, so going to put detention sphere and, and the temple on the bottom of his deck before passing the turn back. Jace sitting at two, but there's no threat of it actually dying, so he can play with it however he wants to. Moving forward, we've got some mana. We have a five right. mana Jace, so now it's just going to be a planeswalker battle. Back and forth we go. Yeah. So this is the one of the reasons why you can tap out for the Kiora, is if you have a follow-up Planeswalker in this situation, then th this exchange is probably fine. It's going to be it's bad for you if David has another Detention Sphere. He's going to go ahead and go straight for the mill. 
So 10 cards going to be turned over here for Thomas. Yeah. I feel like this mill is actually a little aggressive. I'd probably draw a card first. If David has that attention sphere, he's going to play it next turn. And in the case that he does have an attention sphere, those 10 cards won't matter. So I think you'd want to draw a card first. And then once you see the coast is clear, then you start milling him. It's a little bit interesting because like, I think you're OK with trying not to play around attention sphere because he put one on the bottom and there's already one in play. But one thing that he wasn't unable to play around was the revoke existence, which now the needle is naming so that Jace is right. no longer with us. I do agree with you, however, overall, that the uh, the use of that five mana Jace there just milling right away, a little aggressive. I would probably want to get my card yeah, out of it's that. It's like you want to see if he has an answer to it. And if he does, you'd rather have the card. Yeah. Well, here we go. Back and forth. This battle over the needle. The gain say that Thomas did find off of Jace that Beach didn't know about takes care of the detention sphere and he just has to pass the turn back here as Thomas is moving back into the driver's seat right now. Yeah, and remember, when we go to the late game, I mean, Thomas does, first of all, Thomas has the advantage in cards and that's going to continue to add up. As we go to the late game, I still want to stress that Drew has very few answers actually to an Aetherling and Thomas might not know this, but Drew has two Syncopate, four Dissolve in his deck list and one Render Silent and those are the only cards that actually counter the Aetherling. He can Pithing Needle it as well, with it was one of Pithing Needle. But that's actually it. That's And in a counter war, because Drew's burning things like Dispel, he actually doesn't have that many ways to stop an Aetherling. Tom is going to fire up his Mute Vault and go after the Jace that has been Pithing Needle. I was curious if he was, if he was going to make that play. Uh, you know, the reason being, it's like, well, it's already taken care of with the Needle, so what do I care? But we've already seen these players fight over Pithing Needle. Yeah. Um, no one cares about life totals. That's just not how this matchup works. Uh, David has some extra mana, and it seems perfectly reasonable for him to go ahead and just take out the Jace. Syncope going to take care of Cure and pass the turn back. Beach is just running his cards in the counter spells, presumably trying to resolve a Sphinx's Revelation. You saw Thomas actually pick up a copy of Gainsay for his draw step. He'll play a Hollowed Fountain untapped that here. That smells like an Aetherling. It's either an Aetherling or a Rev, but I think I'm with you. This, uh, this is right. an Aetherling here. I'm just going to pass the turn back. And as you mentioned right at the top, the answers here for Beach to Aetherling are few and far between. He has a pithing, one Pithing Needle that he could have boarded in, but that's about it here. Um, he was, yeah, he was short on counter spells for Aetherling. This really came down to him losing the card draw fight, and then the card draw fight led to Drew being out of counter spells. And there's an Elspeth that's going to come into play. That's going to check up to five, so three soldier tokens are going to come into play. And as good as Elspeth is, Aetherling greater sign than that. Yeah, when these two fight, uh, Aetherling wins the fight. Unblockable goes Aetherling, it looks like. And now he's going to pump up the jam, take care of the Elspeth. Five damage will take care of the Planeswalker. Jace is going to tick up to make sure those soldier tokens don't matter all that much. Thomas doesn't even have to bleed out his creature because those soldier tokens will be O ones if they do attack. So Beach will just take a draw here and we'll see what he can find. Thomas's remaining hand is Gainsay, Doomblade, Detention Sphere. He should have answers for anything that Drew can cast at this point. He can counter most of Drew's Revelations or similar cards. He can Detention Sphere, a Pithing Needle, and if a card like Archangel, which he doesn't even have, but if, you know, he, he is protected against those as well. Kiora's going to show up again. Thomas says, I don't think so. Gain say that. Yeah, Dissolve and Sphinx's Revelation, the remaining cards for Drew, but he is behind on the board. He's not gonna, actually going to be able to resolve those cards. Yeah, I was going to say, typically two pretty good cards to actually have in hand at this stage of the game, but he is just super far behind on the board. There's a Jace that's been ticking up and down and all around. It's going to turn over three cards and Dissolve, a Temple of Deceit, and a Mute Vault. And of course, there's an Aetherling that's already resolved. And then that Pithy Needle taking care of the Jace that's on the table. So. It's a, it's a world of trouble here as Thomas adds another counterspell to his hand. Yep, Thomas just needs to protect the status quo. He's in no rush to win here. He has the card. He still has the card advantage, but he still has the card advantage advantage. See, Mutavolt's going to take care of the old uh, the old Jace here, along with Aetherling getting it for some points of damage. Looks like it's going to be a total of six. Again, taking care of that Mutavolt just in case that Detention Sphere goes off of the table. Excuse me, that Needle goes off of the table via Detention Sphere to get the Jace back. So. I do like that play. As you mentioned, no real reason to send Aetherling upstairs. Yeah, you can do it at your own, at your own pace if you want to. There's, he has control of the board, and I don't think he's particularly worried about losing it. He has an answer to a generic permanent, to a creature, and to any spell. Jay's going to bite the dust from one soldier token, which Thomas did know was going to happen because he did take it down. Now you've got these soldier tokens. They're back on defense. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're going to do a good job of that? Well, they'll, they'll <laughs> th th what they'll do is that they'll force David to tap one additional mana. And I like how David is playing the Aetherling here. You notice he's not going to eight mana. He's instead just like, he sacrificed one turn off his clock to have 
a lot of open mana for the rest of the game. You know, just tapping two there to go five and five. I think that's exactly the right move. You see Beach is going to drop his hand on the table. He's going to concede the game. And this is another control player defeated by Aether League. David Thomas going to win this match. Two games to zero over Drew Beach. Bant Walkers bites the dust. Esper Control. That might be the place you want to be if you're looking to cast some revelations this weekend. Yeah, I think the important part of the game was that one exchange where Drew decides to go for a turn four Kiora. 